Well, hello everyone and welcome back to class. No, you don't have to applaud. It's okay. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about something that I've noticed going through your lesson plans that I thought we needed to hit again. And that was how to write a measurable learning object. Uh, uh, John Luke, are, are you passing notes? Uh, this is, this is college, please, please stop. Thank you. So I guess, uh, I guess we'll just talk and just dive right into writing measurable learning objectives. Now remember, Dr. Hayslip likes to make everything as simple as possible because that's the way that it helps me to learn. So I wanted you to use what I call the ABCDs of writing learning objectives. So let's go ahead and start with the A. Now the A for writing a learning objective is what, Mary Ellen? Audience, exactly right. The A stands for audience. And the audience in a learning objective is the student. The student, that's right. So for just now, as you're starting out writing these learning objectives, I know it's a formula and I know that uh, you will not be writing these formulas forever, but for now, I want you to do this because it will help you. All right, so audience, uh, we will say the, who, the teacher? No, not the teacher. Who are we teaching? That's exactly right, Jim Bob. It is the student. The student will be able to. That is the audience in our learning objective. So we did that in red. And I use red because I want us to remember that the most important thing, we're not teaching content, we're teaching students. And then the content and skills come after that. So I'm gonna pick up my next one. And my next color is gonna be black. And black is going to be a strong color because it's going to be the behavior of our learning objective. Now, what is the behavior of our learning objective? Uh, what is it, Ellen? Exactly right. It is our verb. The behavior is going to be our verb. And where do we get these verbs? Where do we think about these verbs? We think about them with, uh, uh, let's see, John Boy? Yes, I know, I know. I'm calling on you because you're sitting up front. So John Boy, when we're thinking about the hierarchy of learning, and remember there's a certain theorist that we talk a lot about, and we start out at the low level, which is really just the knowledge level, but we don't wanna leave our students there. We wanna bump it up pretty quick. So we start at the knowledge, and then we bump them up through different levels where they're actually uh, doing more with this, where they're able to apply where they could compare and contrast and analyze all the way up to where they're actually taking that information and creating something. So who is the theorist that we learned about for that? Benjamin Bloom, excellent, that's right, kiss your brain. Excellent, that's right, Benjamin Bloom. So we're gonna use Bloom's taxonomy to help us with our verbs for our behavior. Blue's taxonomy, our behavior. These are going to be our verbs. And here's just a few. The student will be able to classify, uh, label, uh, define, etc. So we have our audience in red. We have our B, our behavior in black. All right. So now we're going to go to something bright that's going to help communicate that behavior. So we know that after B comes what? Not D. Come on now, college students. After B comes C. Excellent. That's right. C. 
So C stands for condition. Now the condition is going to flesh out that verb. It's going to tell us how and what. So we have the student will be able to, and then we have our behavior, and then we have our condition that's going to tell us how this is going to happen. Maybe it's going to be on a graphic organizer. Maybe it's going to be um, on an exit ticket. Maybe it's going to be on a quiz. Maybe it's going to be on a diagram. Etc. 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 All right. So we have our A, which is what? Audience. We have our B, which is behavior. We have our C, which is our condition. All right. So we have, let's see, we're going to use the blue, the blue. You know, there's a bit of research out there that says that students find it extra punitive if you use red when you're grading their papers. I don't know. To me, red uh, really stands out. I don't really think of it as punitive, but I'm just telling you, if you wanted to use a blue or a purple, that might work out a little bit better on grading papers. You do uh, what you think is best for your students. I like purple and blue, so I might just use purple and blue because that's what I like. All right, so I'm going to use blue for the D, for the D. All right, Elizabeth, what does the D stand for? No, it doesn't stand for dumb. No, it doesn't stand for dandy. No, no, it stands for how we're going to make this very measurable. It's our degree of proficiency. Excellent, that's right. It's our degree of proficiency. Now, I know that your teacher's heart is that we teach to mastery. We want all of our students to make 100% on everything that we teach. But we know that that is not the reality, especially with a lot of students. And even though we accommodate and we scaffold and we reteach as needed, uh, many of our students will never actually achieve mastery, but we can achieve proficiency. So our degree of proficiency is when we say, this is the level that our students have learned and have met this objective. So this could be many things. It could be things like 80%. It could be uh, seven out of 10. It could be even a word like without error, which would be 100%. But if you are only um, assessing maybe three things, then you probably would really want to say without error because it's a very small number that you are, or a very small amount of content or skills that you are assessing, okay? Or you can even use the word successfully. All right, so we have our audience, our behavior, our condition, and our degree of proficiency. All right, so, now, I'm going to erase the board. And we're going to write a couple of objectives together. All right. So, why don't we start with, uh, let's see, what did we use? We used red to start out with. All right. So I'm just gonna abbreviate for time's sake. The student will be able to, and so our, the students, we need a verb. We need a strong verb. Yes, analyze, good. The student will be able to analyze. That is our, oops, I wrote my verb in my red. I messed up, the teacher messed up. You know what happens. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. We all do this. Thank you for your applause on that. All right, so we know that 
we're going to write our verb, our behavior, in black. So the student will be able to analyze. All right, that is our behavior. We're going to analyze what? We've been talking, or I know one of your lesson plans talked about um, Thomas Jefferson's foreign policy. So let's set a number. There's 10 major points to Jefferson's foreign policy. So how many do you want them to do on this? Eight? Seven? You think seven? Okay. All right. So the student will be able to analyze... Uh, Let's see, what did I do? I think I did pink. Analyze uh, seven of the 10 uh, major elements of Jefferson's foreign policy. Okay, and what are we going to use for us to, uh, for us, what is part, what is the condition of this? We've got the audience, we've got the analyze seven of the 10 elements of Jefferson's foreign policy on an exit ticket. I like that, on an exit ticket. What's our degree of proficiency? What is it? Okay, without error. Excellent. So this is measurable. If you write a learning objective that just says the students will understand Je Jefferson's foreign policy, how are you gonna measure that? There's really no way to measure that. All right, so this time I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call around the room and I'm going to let you all come up with a, uh, an, a behavior objective. Now, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're not going to start with the student. I want you to start with the word using. I want you to see how you could write a learning objective that's going to stray a little bit from the formula I gave you. So using a, and I'm just going to keep the same pen for time's sake. Using a what? Using a what? Jim Bob. A Venn diagram, I like that. Using a Venn diagram, what's gonna come next? Olivia, what's gonna come next? Using a Venn diagram, the student will, I'm beginning with a phrase, I needed a comma. The student will be able to, okay? Let me call on someone else. The student will be able to, Rose, do what? Ooh, compare and contrast. That's excellent. The Venn diagram informed that. It informed that answer, didn't it? The student will be able to compare and contrast, compare and contrast what? Compare and contrast, um, let me see. I'm gonna go back to Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen, what are they gonna compare and contrast? You've been working in science. I love that, complete, and incomplete metamorphosis. Okay? Using a Venn diagram, the student will be able to compare and contrast complete and incomplete metamorphosis. Uh, and how are we going to decide, how are we gonna measure that they have successfully done this? Let me see, who have I not called on? Jason. Jason, can, uh, they're going to be able to compare and contrast complete and incomplete metamorphosis with, with what? 
with three, what did you say? Three identifiers, I like that. In each section. All right. So do we have our A? We do, the student. Do we have our B? Yes, they're gonna compare and contrast. What are they comparing and contrasting? Complete and incomplete metamorphosis. And what are they going to use to do this? What is the condition? They're gonna do it on a Venn diagram and then you're gonna measure their proficiency, how? With three identifiers in each section. All right, so that is the end of class today. What I want you to do is I want you to practice writing. I want you to write three learning objectives. Make sure it's got the ABCD method on it and class is over. You don't have to really give me applause for this, but thank you.